so excited and I appreciate each and every
sister arguing with Mary J down the hall. They fight every time they are together. I don't know what it was about this time, but I can hear Courtney shout. It's not nice to call people names, you moron. Sometimes, Courtney really loses it when Mary J is around. She hates Mary J, scratchy voice, and the way she whines all the time. And she hates the way Mary J is constantly brushing her long blonde hair. Brushing and brushing and brushing, even at the dinner table. So, we were so glad when Mom herded everyone together. Sorry to break up the party, guys, Mom said. But Larry and Mary J have to go home now. I'm meeting your dad at the mall. The new babysitter will be here any minute. Can I have something to drink before I leave? Larry asked. He always has to have a drink before he goes. Like he'll die of thirst before he gets home. Me too, his oinky sister whined. Mom hurried to the kitchen to get juice boxes. Then we sent them out into the rain. It was really coming down. I enjoyed slamming the door behind him. Oops, it slipped, it slipped, it slipped, I told Mom. Mom wasn't having it. Matthew, that wasn't nice. Why do we have to have a babysitter, I asked, changing the subject. I'm 12 years old. I can take care of myself. Your sister is only eight, Mom replied. Do you really want to be responsible for her? I turned to Courtney. She flashed me a devilish grin. Mom was right. Courtney is trouble. For one thing, she thinks she's a gymnast. She's always doing cartwheels over the couch or swinging herself off the banister, trying for that perfect landing. She likes to climb things too, like the rain gutters on the side of the house. Last spring, she climbed under the garage roof and six firemen had to come and haul her down. Courtney doesn't need a babysitter, I grumbled. She needs a keeper. Why isn't Mrs. Craven coming? Courtney asked. She's sick, Mom replied. She's sending someone in her place. Thrills and chills, I sighed. Probably some old lady who want us to play Uno all night. By the way, there is nothing wrong with playing Uno. Just wanted to put my two cents in there. The doorbell rang. There she is now, Mom said. At least give her a chance, Matt. Yeah, sure. I pulled open the front door and was hit by a blast of wind and rain. Staggering back, I stared out in a girl in a purple rain slicker. I'm Lulu, she said. Are you Matthew? She didn't wait for me to answer. She stepped into the house, dripping pools of water onto the carpet, 
I mean 
snow. We returned a sled to the other kids, and Lauren and Fred went home. Then suddenly, I remembered Billy. Rubbing my frozen cheeks, I made my way down the hill and saw the snowman standing just as we left it. Oh no, I thought. Then I ran up and shouted, Billy! Billy! We had forgotten all about him. My breath caught in my throat, my whole body shaking. Was he frozen in there? It was just a joke. Had we really done something horrible to this kid? Please, no. Please, no. I grabbed the snowman's head. Billy, hey, answer me. Why don't you answer me? The snow was packed tight like concrete. I dug my gloves in and began frantically pulling it off in big chunks. Billy, can you hear me? Flinging snow everywhere. I quickly ripped away the front of the snowman. I clawed the back snow. It was embedded to the floor. Billy, hey Billy. I battered more snow off the round body. There was no Billy inside. I staggered back. Where is he? I asked myself, staring at the chunks of snow on the ground. He couldn't have climbed out. The snowman had been standing just as we left it. A chill shook my body. I pulled my coat tighter, but I couldn't stop shivering. And then I heard a soft whisper from behind me. Rick, you froze me. You froze me. No, I gasped. I spun around. Where are you, I asked, my voice cracking. I can't see you. Silent. Just the sound of the wind brushing snow off the tree branches. Then the whisper came again. You froze me, Rick. And Billy stepped out from behind a tree. Head down, he moved towards me, staggering in a strange slow motion. And then slowly, 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 he raised his head, and I saw his face. Crusted with ice, patches of snow clung to his hair and eyebrows. Icicles hung from the cheeks and his chin. I opened my mouth and screamed in horror. Billy kept staggering across the snow towards me. His gloved hands outreached as if he wanted to grab me. Rick, you froze me. You froze me to death. My teeth chattered. Chill after chill ran down my body. I stared at Billy, frozen in fear. And then I felt something snap. Something in my brain. Just a soft pop. I tried to move. I tried to carry out, but I couldn't. My legs, my arms, they wouldn't budge. I couldn't open my mouth to scream. I couldn't even blink my eyes. I stared straight ahead. Billy came closer and then closer. Rick, what's your problem? He asked. I could see him and I could see him clearly, but I couldn't answer. I couldn't move my lips or make a sound. And then I remembered Billy's words. You can be so frightened. Your body freezes forever. Come on, Rick, Billy said. The joke is over. I'm okay. Really? Look, the ice and snow. I put it on my face to look scarier. See? He pulled a chunk of ice off his cheeks. Rick, snap out of it, he said. I'm fine. I waited till you guys left. Then I smashed my way out of the snowman. No big you guys were busy sledding. You didn't see me break out. You didn't see me rebuild the snowman. I put it back together, he said. Then I hid behind a tree and waited for you to come back. His hand squeezed my shoulder. I could feel it, but I couldn't move. He waved his hand in front of my face, but I couldn't blink. I couldn't move my eyes. Hey, Rick, you're kidding, right? He said, give me a break. Say something. The 
Sitting in neat rows. Now they were all over. 
aggressive gum chewing. It has to be natural if, if, if that makes sense. Some people just try way too hard and it just comes off. the 
our series and I will get to that separately and so pros and cons of being an ASMR artist I think the biggest battle is dealing with the outside world that has no clue what ASMR is or people trying to make fun of it because they don't understand it what many don't realize is people start to bully, make rumors, or, you know, become afraid of something that they don't truly, truly understand. And so I get those comments like, why the fuck are you whispering? And I always say, if you don't understand why I'm whispering, this video is not for you. This video is not for you. This video, 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 it's not, not, not for you. And then I always get like, um, again, people's moms on my comment section, you know, asking like why their child is listening to me whisper and, you know, also too many people try to make it sexual, which really, really, really aggravates me because there's nothing sexual on my channel like I don't even get dolled up for the videos so like this is the most you'll see like I I don't know how anyone can think that my videos are sexual it, it's fucking ridiculous but for me my biggest challenge is that I'm not a real ASMR artist meaning I don't do much you know of the face touching or the personal attention or the costumes or the role plays you will never get that shit here I do do like I know a lot of people like when I do this and truthfully I do like when certain artists do that as well but that's as far as I go like I don't do like the when people do all this and I don't do like the sound effects and you know the plucking of the eyebrows like I don't do none of those role plays so that being said I feel as if my channel is ASMR like a talk show ish if I'm making sense like I like to bring different topics on my channel I try to make it not boring and sometimes I do struggle with that. I try to do topics that people would like to listen to. Topics that people will say, oh, okay, I'm gonna subscribe to her because she's making sense. You know, it's like with my channel, I feel as if it's a hit or miss because people, many people do like a lot of eating. I don't do. Um, a lot of people do like role plays, which I don't do. So I'm still trying to stay in the ASMR game, but it is difficult because I don't do 80% or actually 90% if I'm being honest of what other people do. So I do struggle with different content because I like to be different. I like to touch on different people at different times, you know, so... And one thing I do not do, I never look at someone else's page and see what they're doing and then copy. I, I don't do that. I don't copy other people's style. I just do me. It's the easiest thing to do. Just be yourself. And that's that. I know many people are like, oh, you know, you should have over a million subscribers and stuff. But it is what it is, you know, I am not the attention seeker and sometimes I always say fast money is never good money and that's another thing with the high schoolers I want to mention, they look at social media and think, you know, I'm going to be the next so and so, they're watching people with the mansions and the cars and little do they know that shit is rented over them or it's complete lies like people's editing skills nowadays is phenomenal and people don't seem to understand you that many people do not put negativity out on social media and they always try to you know flash what they have or brag about what they have but one thing about social media I noticed that you can have it all one day 
also do that's one thing I battle with social media or YouTube going back to the other question is you know everyone's always not everyone let me not say that but many people are people in general go off looks it, it's sad that we live in a world that looks are everything you know and because I'm black and not the most attractive and I'm overweight and that's another thing like if people want to attack me they always attack my weight nothing else like you know no one ever calls me stupid or you know well, I've gotten called ugly plenty of times but I'm a fat slob I'm you know um I'm unattractive to look at like I read those comments and um, I do erase them because I do not want that type of hate on my comment section and I definitely don't want anyone in my comment section to go back and forth with somebody who really doesn't matter if that makes sense sometimes I see people go back and forth on comments and it's like I don't want my majestic babies wasting breath on people who are hateful, you know, or who are just doing this to get a rise out of someone or to get likes or to get clout or whatever, you know. But it is hard being on social media and not being the picture perfect image that many look for. You know, and it's fucked up to say, but being black and overweight does not help me at all. You know, it is what it is, but, um, so I think I rambled enough in regards to this part of the question. And so now we are going to direct this, the next part of this video completely to Jeffrey Dahmer. So, hope to see you there. Okay, this part of the video, we are going to talk about the Jeffrey Dahmer series on Netflix. And, um, it's funny because this is the first time I actually had a shitload of Instagram messages in regards to me talking about this and I did a whole breakdown on Jeffrey Dahmer on my true crime tier on my Patreon but I think I will do things a little differently here um, I'm not going to get into his entire story I am not that's what my Patreon's for I broke everything down but for those who do not know there is a true crime series on Netflix that has to do with Jeffrey Dahmer and there's been so much hype and so much talk about it mixed emotions, mixed feelings about the series so my opinion well, again for those who do not know Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the most prolific serial killers we have in U.S. history. He killed 17 young boys and he was also a cannibal. And for those who do not know what that is, he liked to eat people or his victims. That being said, um, there's a couple of things here. You know, a lot of people are saying like, you know, why do people like it? We're forgetting the victims and what about the families? And how can people praise this? Here's the thing. One thing I noticed, especially in 2022, that a lot of people are fascinated by true crimes. It, it is what it is. Like, people have become really, uh, not obsessed, but like, if you're like me, I love true crime, and that doesn't make, you know, me weird or crazy, it just makes me open up my eyes to 
is when I went to when I first went off to college to Albany, my my major was criminology, right? And the very first person we learned about was Jeffrey Dahmer. And then second was Ted Bundy. Why? Because it's a fascinating story in regards to we have these two people, right? Who look normal, who had regular jobs, who, you know, according to some people were handsome, tall and handsome, whatever the situation may be. But just, it, it's just amazing that they weren't, I guess, considered serial killer types, if that makes sense, you know. But the fascination of just, you know, killing people and the way he did it and then eating them and then how he got how he got away with this shit for so long. It's fascinating because we're watching like, what the fuck? Really? Did someone actually do this shit? Um, the Jeffrey Dahmer series. I actually cried at the end of it. I, I would be the first to admit it. I cried. I cried for many different reasons. The first one is there's nothing like surviving a horrific night. And those victims that got away, they're going to have a lifetime worth of just drama, nightmares, anxiety, PTSD, and I know all too well. As some of you may know, I had a horrific night, sexual assault, um, someone tried to actually murder me, and here we are. And so, I, 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 like, I guess just me being a survivor as well, I just understand the long haul that these people have, and it's not just the ones that got away, it's the victim's family, it's the people who lived in the apartment building that Jeffrey Dahmer was doing his killings in. Um, for instance, he had a neighbor that kept calling and calling and calling the cops in regards to what she was hearing, what she was smelling, and because they lived in a low-income building, predominantly black people, the cops couldn't give two shits. They, they did not care. And back in the 70s, too, you know, um, sexuality was definitely a big thing. It was something that people did not talk about. It was something that people couldn't wrap their brains around in regards to, you know, being gay. And so a lot of people hit it. A lot of people didn't understand it. And then we had a lot of racism back in the 1970s. So, you know, the people that he lived, that lived in his building, you know, just imagine like seeing him come and go and then finding out actually what he was doing in that apartment, especially the lady that was trying to call the cops nonstop over and over and over again. And then there was a scene that a young boy, I do believe he was like 14 or 15, if I'm not mistaken, that actually got away. And Jeffrey Dahmer actually drugged him, but he got away. Do you know, um, he asked these cops for help. Do you know these cops brought him right back to Jeffrey Dahmer's house that same night that he got away, brought him back. And all Jeffrey Dahmer had to say was, well, that's my boyfriend. The cops, and the cops were asking, like, what's wrong with him? And he just mentioned that he had too much to drink. The cops never did an investigation. They never asked to see ID from the kid or Dahmer. And then Jeffrey Dahmer took them, took the cops and this poor boy aka, well, slash, I should say, victim, back to the house, and Jeffrey Dahmer took pictures of him, like, maybe two hours prior, and he was like, see, we were taking pictures, and he lives there, and I'm like, there 
nothing really happened to them in regards to, I think they had like, what, two weeks off for not fully investigating when that kid got murdered.
astrology, whatever. But then at one point, his father realized it was an obsession, not something that he wanted to go into. It was an obsession. And he, he, he'd rather spend time with, like, dead animals. Like, these are all signs, you know, killing animals. And then he would torment the kids in the neighborhood with this, this dead animal shit. Um, just, this, there were just many people looking in that could have stepped in, and they did not. And then I also had to appreciate how honest Dahmer was. You know, he never told a lie. He never, um, when he sat down, he answered all questions. He remembered ages, names, all of it. And I have to appreciate the fact that he says he, he doesn't blame anybody but himself. He doesn't blame his parents or no, or no one else but him. But I have to blame the parents because they saw this behavior happening and unfolding. And again, it was his best to like, just turn a blind eye. Like the, the mother was like, you know, to the father, that's your problem. She upped and left and the father thought it was a mother's problem. And then they tried to dump the problem on the grandmother. And it's just like, and then between the cops being called numerous times and them having Jeffrey Dahmer's name, like, in their book somewhere, that's why, like, at the end when that, the, the guy who actually got away looked at the cops and was like, you knew this shit, you knew he was doing this, and you let, you let him go, and he just fell to the floor because it's like, yeah, I could have prevented this. We all tried to prevent this. And nobody wanted to listen. Nobody. Nobody. But then you have a Jeffrey Dahmer, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, we have to, we have to see how we got here. And we got here because he never got the proper help. But we also got here because he never was loved. He never had, like, a loving mother that hugged him and kissed him or whatever. And if you noticed in the series all he wanted was someone to love him he never wanted people to leave him he always keeps saying why does everyone leave you know um it's just sad that he just wanted love he just wanted to be loved and that is so sad because many people not killer so many people in the world that's all they want is someone just to fucking love them you know um or just be a friend something and that's heartbreaking you know and then we have a Jeffrey Dahmer who knew that he was off right he knew he was a monster so what did he do he tried to conceal that shit and that's when he ended up getting a job at a morgue um he tried to dig up dead bodies although he found out it was way too much work but his plan was to steal a dead body and take it home. And that way, that was concealing, like, the monster inside of him, right? He was trying to prevent him from going out and getting his victims. And then when he realized that digging up a dead body is a lot of fucking work, he stole a male mannequin that he was trying to seduce or just sleep with just to kind of, I guess, get that love or, or something, you know, but then the grandmother found that and threw that shit out, so it was like the couple of times that he tried to conceal his, um, monster ways, it just didn't work, and like he said in the documentary, the urges were, were too real, I actually watched, and it's all over YouTube, there is a um, I guess like his last interview It's interesting watching him talk Because like he said um, He never wanted to really hurt people But the urge was just too strong Going back to the deaf mute um, individual That in the series though I mean I really like Jeffrey Dahmer really liked him And I believe the guy liked him back but I don't think Jeffrey Dahmer understood that he was a college student and that he came home every single weekend. That's why he says, I'm not leaving. I promise I will be back. Not realizing that he was going back to school. And then, God damn it, Jeffrey let him go. They kissed goodbye. I thought, I was like, okay, maybe this, but 
so bad because I feel as if if Jeffrey Dahmer had a relationship, I don't think he would have done the whole killing spree. Let me know down below if you if you agree with that. Um, you know because he shut the door, he was at me until I don't know. He came back for his keys. Um, I don't know. So somebody admitting that they have a mental illness and that they were trying to, you know, conceal it. I don't know. All of it is just so sad, but my heart goes out to them, to all the families. I can't even imagine. And then going through like the court and finding out like how your child died is, oh my God. Like they found heads, hearts, um, body parts. It like in his apartment, <clears throat> he was carrying around a, a severed head. Um, he just had this fascination with death. And it's like people like that, like a fascination with death, right? And then you're going out, like killing animals and picking up roadkill. Like how can that not be a fucking sign? There's also, and what's really crazy is there's also a, on Peacock, it's something called, I think it's called My Friend Dahmer, or My Friend is Dahmer, or something like that. It's on Peacock, and it shows a younger Jeffrey Dahmer. It shows how he got here in regards to him growing up, his father not being there, and how he was in high school, like with friends and everything else. And also to like becoming an alcoholic at 14 because you're so miserable. It's like, what the fuck? Like, no, not drinking. He was a full-blown alcoholic at like 14. The man was coming to school drunk as fuck at 16, riding the school bus. You know, people think, you know, most people have orange juice or like apple juice. No, he's having fucking vodka at 16, 14, 15, 16. Shit is crazy. And he did have friends in high school, but the friends knew that he was weird. And I think they kind of used him as a someone, like not a punching bag, but someone to make fun of, someone to do like their dirty work or their pranks for them, you know. And at the end, he realized that these people weren't his friends. They were just there to make fun of him and make him embarrass himself or humiliate himself. Just all of it. God. I'm trying to think what else. Um, also, too, on the set of Jeffrey Dahmer, they also had, like, psychiatrists. Um, Evans actually saw a psychiatrist after this whole situation because although they're acting like he said this is true events, you know, and they try to be as precise as possible. And again, I don't know why the families are so pissed off because I think they did it in a really tasteful way. And again, it's not like you can't Google what happened and all these names pop up. Matter of fact, there's so many court clippings on YouTube in regards to the trial, in regards to how the family reacted. So it's not like it's not out there. I can understand like if the story was never done and all of a sudden you're turning on Netflix and boom, there goes the story. No, this shit has been, there's been so many, so many. And also too, I think what also bothered me and the same thing with Ted Bundy is that when these people were in jail, they actually had fan mail, people who adored them, people who thought, you know, killing was cool, sending these people money, like how do you fall in love with a serial killer? That's like saying if my ex, like, okay, I could never, <laughs> never in a million years, even like my ex and I, we had some fucked up fights, like my face fucked up, I saw all of it, like I've been through some shit with my ex, but after the fact that he tried to murder me, I could not see myself falling back in love with that. Like, wh like, why would somebody want a monster? I, 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 and I think that's also what bothered me at the end of the Dahmer. It's like the fan mail and people are giving him money, and I'm just like, what? what? Like, aren't you afraid that one day he might say to you? 
that's why I it really hit home for me in a way. Yeah. Also, too, um, there was a point I wanted to make, but I forgot. Oh, there was a comment that I read on Facebook in regards to people are praising the Jeffrey Dahmer series, and we should be ashamed of ourselves, and we're disgusted, and what about the victims? Here's the thing. Nobody is saying this shit was cool. Nobody is saying that the acts that Jeffrey Dahmer committed was cool at all. We know it's fucked up. It's disgusting. It's unheard of. But I think people are, how do I say this? They're glorifying this series because on um, how well it was executed, if, if I'm making any sense, the way they delivered it, I think was easy for people to watch. We didn't actually see him, like, cutting on people. We really didn't see him, like, cutting up and then, like, you know, like, we, a lot of the scenes, we, it was left to imagination about what might have happened or what did happen, right? And so, I also do, the actor that played Jeffrey Dahmer, I think that also, because he was well known, if you watch American Horror Story, you know exactly who the actor is. So I think that's why people are embracing it because it was done in a tasteful way. I could be wrong. Please let me know down below your input. But I think that's what's happening, you know. Um, and also, do again, it's part of history. And I think because my nephew, my youngest, Mr. Devin, was talking about this. And um, he never knew that killers got down like this. And I think, too, it's opening up eyes to our youngsters, you know, on the shit that's been happening since 1970. Because let's not forget, we also had Ted Bundy. We also have um, John Wayne Gacy. And, yeah. Yeah, we had uh, we had some fucked up killers back in the day. Um, going further back. I think Jack the Ripper was probably the most horrific serial because he was never caught and he was killing prostitutes. And then fast forward, I think for, uh, but that wasn't even in the U.S. So for us, like Jeffrey Dahmer, um, Ted Bundy, like it's just, they're just the known serial killers to this day. Also too, I also want to touch on base on how Jeffrey Dahmer died because I was conflicted with this. Um, does anybody really think that he was sorry for his actions? You know, because they did say the difference between the real Dahmer and the story is that, like, he actually did not wear his glasses during his court trial because he did not want to see the victim's families at all. In the TV series, in the Netflix series, we do see him wearing his glasses, but they said that was not true, and that's like the only thing that they did not get right was the glasses. Jeffrey Dahmer said he did not want to face his victim's families at all. You know, so, do you really think, though, that he was sorry for his sins? Because remember, he got, I think, baptized in prison and was turning over a new leaf. I don't know how I feel about that. And then we had another inmate that had mental issues. And again, I don't know if that part of the of this series was true, but the guy who killed Dahmer was not supposed to be in the library. And the librarian said, you know, because of your mental health, you're not allowed to look at this or whatever he, he was requesting. He was not supposed to do it, and she allowed him to do it. So now you have another inmate with mental health issues that no one listened. He got a hold of Dahmer's, I guess, read everything that he did. And, you know, all of a sudden the voices were coming to him and telling him, you know, that God wanted him to kill Dahmer. I mean, at the end of the day, he got what he deserved, especially, I mean, but, um, I don't know, like, another inmate with mental health issues. I don't, I don't know. All of it 
is just fucking sad because when he killed Tom, right, he also killed another inmate that had nothing to do with the situation that was in the room. Um, he killed one inmate before and then he came out and killed Dahmer. So he was definitely on a rampage then. But again, someone else got killed that had nothing to do with the situation. So to me, that was sad. And the fact that he didn't even fight back, Jeffrey Dahmer didn't even fight back. It was like he knew he deserved it, you know. This is what would make the world feel better. It is what it is. Because remember, Jeffrey Dahmer wanted the electric chair. He wanted to die or lethal injection or whatever. But because of the state that he was in, they did not have the death penalty. And that's why when we saw him in jail, he was actually watching the execution of John Casey. And he was basically saying, like, lucky guy, because he wanted to die. All of it was just fucked up and, 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 and sad. And I just, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on the Jeffrey Dahmer situation. And as always, I will see you guys in two weeks. Because I have, um, well, we actually have one more week. Halloween and I I think I already have five videos already done so I'm just gonna release those and in November I will start back with the visuals and stuff like that but I already recorded pre-recorded five videos so I'm definitely gonna release those I think it's like an ornable cup whisper I have a whole lot of those coming um, but I did enjoy the month of October and I, I hope guys did along with this 5k special i am thinking about adding on the john gacy to this um because i know before when i did the the um my my two hour special before i actually also included some true crime but um I do try to leave the true 